Hi everyone, thanks for tuning in to watch. I want to show you some wonderful dolls from our upcoming auction, Daffodown Dilly, which is an archaic term. I was trying to find something that felt like spring, and we were looking at lilies and daffodils, and I came across this archaic word called Daffodown Dilly, which is another word for, lil for daffodil, and I loved it. It made me happy, so I'm hoping some of the dolls that I show you today will make you smile and be happy. We have wonderful dolls from the Paul Johnson collection. I've heard so many people say how they, this man was so beloved to them and was such an important um, person in helping them build their collection. And uh, from part two of the Margaret Lumia collection, still more wonderful dolls coming from the treasure trove of her archives, as well as other fine dolls. And so I have to begin showing you, I wanted to show you a few of the uh, dolls that are going to be from the French makers at the auction. And what I have on the table in front of me now are dolls from, you guessed it, Leon Casimir Brew. And it's quite an assortment. It's an interesting group of dolls. On the far right is the classic brew that everyone dreams that one day they will own one brew. This is the one I want. It's the Brew June, and it's the one that has what they refer to as a little stuck out tongue, because there's just the tiniest tip of a tongue tip at, in between the lips, which it is a closed mouth, but, but there's a little space and they put a little tongue tip in there. Very, very beautiful. Wonderfully shaped um, uh, chin. Everything about her is extraordinary. She has her perfect brew bisque hands. And this costume, this extraordinary original costume is absolutely wonderful. I'm turning it around so you can see it all the way around. And including her signed shoes, her signed brew shoes, Brew Junar, which is a very, very desirable feature to find. Next to her, we have standing a smaller example of the same doll. Let me just tip her head up a little so you can see her a little bit better. She's another little brown-eyed bebe, and she has um, a very sweet little bo original body with the original uh, brew label on her torso, and in a size that so many collectors aim to find, and I'm going to be showing you some other smaller dolls in just a few minutes. So this would be an example of dolls from that small collection, that one I like to joke about, you can always find a room for one in the cupboard and you can always sneak another one into your house. So here we are. Next to her is among the rarest of the really, really fine French dolls, and this is the Bebe Gourmand. This was introduced by Leon Casimir Brew. It is a doll that in some ways falls in the category of what was he thinking? Um, it was designed to have a doll that would um, eat a biscuit. And so I'm going to show you a few things here. I'm going to lift the wig and I'm going to show you inside the head where you will be able to see a very long tongue. And the doll was designed so that the tongue could protrude child would put a biscuit on it, the tongue would go in, the biscuit would fall through a metal tube in the body of the doll and come out the bottom of the feet, which were hollow. So it is the only doll that has this technique, but more to the point, it's the only doll that has these wonderful modeled bisque feet on the doll. And this particular example has her original undergarments. Very, very sturdy, perfect body. Let me see, did I mess up her hair? No, she just got a tumbling off cap. And original gorgeous dress. Original brew dress. And wait, but wait, there's more. There is blue socks to match her dress and sign brew shoes with, look, a trap door. So when the biscuit came out the bottom of the feet, the child just opened the trap door on the shoes and the biscuit would fall out and you could play all over again. Now, sometimes I think about dolls and how they were made and the, the, what went into them and I think about those trap shoes. If a child ever played with that doll, do you realize the lifespan of those shoes? very short. 
that trap door would fall right off. So here, to be able to find a pair of the shoes to begin with is phenomenal. To find them in the extraordinary condition that you just saw them is pretty, pretty remarkable. So here we have the very, very, one of the rarest of the brew models. I have in front a little tiny, this is the first model of the brew bebe, and this is the model known as the brew brevet. Um, because it simply had a different label on the front of the chest that said Bebe Brevet, meaning that Lee and Casimir Brew had registered it with the French, French courts. The face quickly evolved into being the more classic uh, brew face that people are looking for. This one is a very soft, very gentle kind of face. has perfect little curled bisque fingers, little just gorgeous little bisque hands, and a very sturdy and wonderful body. And guess what? Sign brew shoes. It's remarkable that we have one, two, three, four dolls here that have five that have their original sign brew shoes. Then we have the rare dark complexioned um, Leon Casimir brewed model. Very, very beautiful. When I look for the brown or ebony black collection dolls, one of the criteria to me, and every collector is different, but you choose your own. But one of my criteria is I want a flawless complexion because when you get little rubs or scratches, it's bad enough on the white complexion dolls, but on the brown ones, it's, it's, um, it's very disjointing. So to, you, just, you look for them with these flawless complexions like this girl has, very, very glowing, and it's just absolutely beautiful. And guess what? Signed brew shoes. These are so rare. The shoes alone are worth so much money because it's almost impossible to find them. And then we have another example of a brew bebe. We have this lovely fellow standing at the back, and he is the brew June also, a little later period, about perhaps about five years later than our girl on the right. But he proudly stands in his sailor costume with a French flag and his little cap, and on his feet, guess what? Signed brew shoes. A wonderful example of the brew bebes from various time periods, but various time periods, we're talking 1878 to 1888. We're talking like a five-year time period, or 10-year time period here for these dolls. Um, and it's remarkable that we're able to pinpoint as precisely as we can the time that they were made. So I hope you find one here to your liking. But then there was the earlier period. And I put two fashion dolls here because I wanted the larger one to show you the scale of this tiny little doll in the dome. And I wanted you to see, I wanted you to see how pretty it looks in the dome arrangement. Because I think more people should start to think how pretty things could be if they put little arrangements in their home. This is um, the deposed smiling Brew Bebe by Leon Casimir Brew. And look at that tiny size. It is unbelievable. Because here next to her is a classic 17 or 18 inch um, Brew Poupe. This one I wanted you to see because it has a wonderfully articulated wooden body. But I also wanted you to see it in scale to this French fashion. Now, I think later on you're going to look at videos. Hopefully you'll look at the videos of the Madame Alexander uh, collection and you'll see the little 10 inch Sisset fashion dolls. I think it's time that collectors start looking at doll collecting over a long span of history rather than just their isolated subject they collect. And perhaps it would be great to have this little 10 inch poupe by Leon Casimir Brew, 1875, next to a little 10 inch Sisset fashion girl from 1955 some 80 years later. It would be quite interesting to see, in my opinion. Nobody will listen to me, though. I have four of the extraordinary French dolls from the Daffodown Deli. Doesn't make you happy just to say that word, auction, uh, coming up. And I wanted to really kind of feature and show them to you because I think they're so very special. On, right on the front is an absolutely fabulous doll. I kind of wanted her to be on the cover, but I settled for making her number three, I think, and number three in the catalog. This is an entirely original uh, Bebe Jumeau. Now, Bebe, but guess what? She has a lady body. She has a sculpted bosom and derriere and the, designed to wear uh, some of the more 
um, lady accommodating styles. And here she is in the original uh, Jumeau factory costume made by Ernestine Jumeau in their studios. And in the mo mode of the Marie Antoinette shepherdess style, which was very, very popular and kind of had a comeback in the 1880s uh, when this doll would have been made. Wonderful fabric with the velvet uh, and painting on the beautiful satin and then the coral overlay. You can see the in between where the fading took place. It's just beautiful and wonderful little pink bows that accommodate it. She even has on her wrist her Bebe Jumeau armband, which is so almost impossible to find. She has her original shoes dyed to match the overskirt and with little heels on them. Absolutely fascinating. And her wig is unbelievable. It is the, the periwig style, the powdered hair style, all original arranged curls, very, very thick. And look at the flowers, how they're arranged in her hair. And then look at the two little uh, final ponytails coming down at the back. This is an absolutely extraordinary or all original doll that you simply do not find anymore. When you do, you must, you must win it and you must cherish it and keep it because it's superb. And I'm also just noticing something I hadn't noticed before. She has, with this period of Jumeau, absolutely stunning eyes, very, very deep and beautiful. This style is a treasure. When you discuss museum quality, this is it. On the other, well, let's do next to her because we'll stay in the Jumeau family for a moment. And I want to show you what to me is one of the prettiest examples of Bebe Triste, the Jumeau Triste model, uh, designed by Carrier Belleurs for Jumeau, a special commission. And here is a superb example because the, the costume itself is so extraordinary, from the fluffy muff to the underdress with the embroidered edging to this fabulous, fabulous cape with a matching edging and the lace at the bottom with overlaying the fringed tool. Again, you have the, the collar, which matches the muff. I'm going to turn it around so you can look at it. When you see this bonnet at the back, you won't believe it. Look at that bonnet. That is absolutely extraordinary. And the little bows at the top and the, the um, trapunto stitching of the bonnet. This is an extraordinary doll. And then when he comes around again, Oh, look, we forgot to even mention the beautiful fringed silk parasol. This is one luxury girl. And if you were to only own one Jumeau Triste in your collection, this would be the one to go for because she's extraordinary in every way. Now, let's move over to the other side of the table for a moment. And we are staying with our Jumeau, Mr. Emile Jumeau. And this is from his earlier period of production with the eyes that are sometimes called wraparound eyes, which is a kind of a horrible phrase in my mind, but it does, it does emphasize and describe how dramatic the eyes are, that they extend to the, to the corners of the face. Very, very large, very dramatic, and made more dramatic by the very pale complexion of the time and the mauve blushed eyeshadow. This is a stunning, stunning early doll from Jumeau, like the 1878 to 1877 period in there. Very, very beautiful. And I'm going to turn her around for a moment because she has this fabulous costume as well. And I want you to be able to see the bonnet, which continues the beautiful purple color of her dress. And then finally, of the large dolls that we're showing today, we're showing you a very fine example of an early uh, Schmitte Fies Bebe. And she has the wonderful. Um, Features that people like on this particular model, which is like the little pointy chin and the little um, beautifully shaped nose. Uh, her mouth has a little space between the lips, which is like a suggestion of their almost teeth there. But it's, it's a closed mouth and just wonderfully detailed. And if I could just turn her to the side, you'll be able to um, see her a little more from her profile. And then let me turn her around again, and you can look at her straight on. Beautiful doll. Now we're going from the large to the very small, because we have a beautiful collection of dolls that I always describe, the dolls that fit in the palm of your hand, and I want to show those to you. In the palm of your hand, little dolls. How could you ever have too many of those? 
In order for you to see the scale of this wonderful little treasure trove of little French tiny, tiny bebés, I have put their big sister next to them. She is measuring 17 inches tall, which will give you an idea of the size of the small ones uh, that are being shown here. And by the way, so you can, while we're talking about her, I've included her, she's a bebé jumeau, and to me, she has the most beautiful, notable collection, uh, complexion. It's golden amber color. It's very, very beautiful and really accommodating to her original costume. A gorgeous Bebe Jumeau. Now next to her, on the far corner, is standing a doll with one of the rarest marks of the Jumeau firm. And it's known as the cartouche mark. And I'm going to turn it around. I'm going to lift her little hat and show, her, show you the mark. It, it's like an incised banner, and big letters Jumeau are incised inside that. I think of, if you could see 5,000 Jumeaux in your lifetime, you might find this once or twice. Extremely rare, early model Jumeau. And I turn it back around again now, and you can see her face. She has her original lamb's wool wig. And remember we just talked about wraparound eyes? Well, here is an example of wraparound eyes on a little smaller model of the early Bebe, a gorgeous, gorgeous doll. And she has an all wooden, fully articulated body, which is also extremely rare to find as well. Superb, superb doll. Next to her was this tiny little doll I included for you to see because it's all bisque and it has the initials FG for Gaultier on the head. And look at the little stockings. If I put it down here, can you see them then? And you can see those very rare little uh, striped stockings and fancy little shoes. So an all bisque by Gaultier, very, very hard to find. And this one in a lovely outfit and with rare painted shoes and stockings. Next to uh, her is, remember we just saw a beautiful doll from Schmidt et Fies in the last group, the very large one. Here is a tiny example, very, very small with the Schmidt mark on it, SCH in a shield, and in her tiny little size. In the palm of the hand, because that's where they would fit. You could, people, okay, now the next one is, look, look at this tiny little doll. Now you need to have this, a whole shelf of these tiny little babies of this size in your cabinet, and then right next to them on another shelf, those Alexander Wendykins in their beautiful costumes. They're eight inches tall, just like this is. It's just wonderful. This particular doll is, oh, look at that face. How could you not walk and look at that face every time you see it and smile? Very, very, I don't know, is it smug? Is it shy? Is it, is it I'm trouble? Whatever, it's a wonderful doll and so rare in this size. And then we have, let me see who we have here. Oh yes, the beautiful early premier Jumeau Bebe. Let me turn her around, and I want you to see her bonnet at the back, too, because this is so great. Beautiful early face. She has the early, early body. Look at that bonnet. And while I'm, you're looking at that, I, might, I don't think I showed you the back of this bonnet with its upturned brim. It's absolutely wonderful. You can see the two of them there. And then... Finally, among these little ones, and her little hat fell off, I'm going to put it back on. And this is the Bebe Hooray. She's on the cover of the catalog, catalog Daffodowndilly, playing among the springtime daffodils. And this is a very, very beautiful example with, again, her all wooden body, a wonderful example of the Hooray with beautiful painting of her eyes and just all of the classic features of the hooray. And then I left this in our dome arrangement, which we'll be showing the dome arrangement at the auction. I wanted you to see some of our display work. And let me lift this top off so you can see better. We have an early premiere Bebe Jumeau in the tiny size in her all original costume with her matching parasol and her little leather shoes. Bonnet and dress match exactly in their original from the Jumeau factory, the atelier of Madame Ernestine Jumeau, who just like Beatrix Alexander, 
would go out and search for fine fabrics, bring them back and teach her, her crew to make these superb fashionable costumes that she'd introduce new models twice a year. Standing next to her are two little wonderful all bisque mignonettes in their original costumes. On the final side, I wanted to show you three, three dolls that really don't really fit in with the French dolls at all, but I thought, think they're important to show. Standing in the middle is a German doll, Simon and Halbig. Uh, this was presented at the French market and advertised in some of their exhibitions and featured, and she's wearing her original uh, Japanese costume with beautiful, beautiful detail on this and I want you to see her shoes so I'm going to lift this up she's wearing the stacked heel shoes very wonderful and her very elaborate original headdress and then the two remaining dolls on here are dolls from the works of the superb American artist, Dorothy Heiser. Uh, the queen on the left with her um, embedded jewels and crown there, and the details of her workmanship. If you ever can read a book or an article about how Dorothy Heiser did her designs, uh, you would understand how meticulous it was. The Nefertiti model that she has, um, we have here from Dorothy Heiser is is, unbel is absolutely unbelievable. I have never seen another one like it. Let me turn it around so you can see. You see the necklace that's on there. You see the detail on the headdress. The bodies were designed and shaped to accommodate to the particular costumes. The doll has the original bracelets. And when I turn her around, you can see that she has uh, sandals with the ankle jewelry. So to be able to have work by this American artist, Dorothy Heiser of mid 20th century, is an extraordinary find to have. I'm going to show you some fun dolls that really will say Daffodown Dilly to you in our next grouping.